The biggest weapon in the world doesn't look like this, but it's this. The whole world is a slave to this US dollar. For America, this dollar is not just a currency for transactions. It's a tool, a weapon through which the US controls the world. Can you explain why we always compare other currencies to the US dollar? Who decides the value of the dollar? Who controls the dollar? So how exactly did this become so powerful? And what difference does it make to us? More than $2.3 trillion of US currency is now in circulation around the world. And it's believed that two thirds of $100 billion and nearly half of $50 billion are held outside the US. The United States is generally politically and economically stable. Your time is valuable. So let's start it. But the video is quite interesting. So please watch it till the end. And if you learn something new, do share it with your friends. It's a question for you about this note and the difference in these notes. So both are pieces of paper, but these pieces of paper have no value. And the world bows down to this piece of paper because that US dollar is a world currency, a currency that can trade with other currencies outside the country. But how did Benjamin's photo become the world's reserve currency? Before the First World War, until 1914, all major currencies of the world kept the value of their notes as much as the gold they held in their treasury. Many of those countries abandoned the gold standard and started paying their military expenses with paper money instead. If there's no gold, there's no value to the money. The Americans were geniuses. They said, there's no problem if you don't have gold, because we have gold. Our dollar is linked to gold. So you link your pounds to the US dollars and the US dollar will be linked with gold. During World War II, the United States sold weapons and supplies to many of its allies and collected its payments in gold. By 1947, the US had accumulated 70% of the world's gold reserves, leaving other nations with a huge disadvantage. To try to remedy this and other financial matters, 44 allied countries met in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, in 1944, an agreement was reached called the Bretton Woods Agreement. It was decided that the US dollar is a stable currency, so everyone can link their country's currency to the US dollar. So this unassuming dollar became the backup for the world. Today, all central banks hold 60% of their reserves in that US dollar. About half of international trade is invoiced in dollars, and about half of all international loans and global debt securities are denominated in dollars. Now in Zimbabwe, there's hyperinflation, and their currency has no value, so people there trade in US dollars. Also, Ecuador, El Salvador, Palau, Panama trade in dollars because people trust the dollar more than their own currency. This has created an economic hierarchy in the world on the top was gold, followed by the US dollar, which was linked to gold, and all other currencies came below the dollar. That's why the US dollar became stronger than every other currency. In 1971, US President Richard Nixon shocked the world when he delinked the dollar from gold, giving the Fed complete freedom to control the US dollar. From there, free-floating exchange rates were born meaning exchange rates were no longer fixed to gold and were determined by market forces instead. Despite periods of market volatility and the inflation that followed, the US dollar has remained the world's reserve currency. Its sheer volume and America's efficient banking system made the notes more convenient and cheaper to trade than other currencies. The way trade works in today's world is, if a country wants to buy something from China, that country's buyer will have to convert their country's currency into US dollars to pay the Chinese seller in US dollars. And then the Chinese bank converts US dollars into yuan and pays the Chinese seller in yuan. In this transaction, there are two problems. Both parties have to pay additional conversion charges. And second, both are dependent on the Fed and policy decisions of the USA. They control how each US dollar will be used. So, through sanctions, the US can control which country can make payments with that US dollar and which country cannot. This is what the US did with Russia. After Russia invaded Ukraine, the US imposed sanctions on Russia, meaning they stopped Russia from trading with all those countries that only accept payment in US dollars. 
Some European countries opposed the US, sanctions against Iran. These sanctions were put in place after the US withdrew from the Iranian nuclear deal in 2018 and included banning dollar transactions with Iranian banks. As a result, Europe is developing a Euro-backed system designed to facilitate trade between Europe and Iran without sending money across borders. The European countries still in the Iran deal are trying to figure out a way to work around the US system so they can trade with Iran. Now that bothers the US, which is trying to exert maximum pressure on the Iranian economy. Also, these countries are facing sanctions. In 2018, Germany's foreign minister wrote that it is essential that we strengthen European autonomy by establishing payment channels independent of the US. And some are hoping the world's future reserve currency won't be tied to a national government at all. They see cryptocurrencies, such as Bitcoin, eventually overthrowing the dollar. But even so, any change in the US, dollar strength certainly wouldn't happen overnight. International trade is done in US dollars, loans are paid in US dollars, and this dollar is controlled by the Federal Reserve. This dollar is used as a weapon. We all possess a key to our bank account, a key that grants us access to our hard-earned money, our savings, our financial security. But what if I told you about another key? A master key that unlocks not just one, but all the bank accounts in our country. With this key, you could access any account, withdraw funds, even alter pins. When you compare both these keys, which key's value will be more? Your key or the master key? Would you prefer to live in any country where one person holds the master key, granting them access to all accounts, including yours? Would you feel secure in such a scenario? Of course not, after all, it's my account, my money. But unfortunately, we live in such a world where US Federal Reserve's policies dictate the policies of most countries in the world. The US dollar gives America extra territorial reach. The US is able to dictate people's behavior, the future of companies, and the transactions of a country. The Office of Foreign Assets Control, OFAC, controls how each US dollar is used outside the country. People are saying that the currency of their country is not getting weaker. The dollar is getting stronger. This is like saying, I am not getting fewer marks. Others are scoring more. Sounds stupid, right? But it's true. At the beginning of the pandemic, the US government and the Federal Reserve gave a huge economic stimulus to the people under the CARES Act. Every adult got $1,200 and every child got $500 as a one-time payment. Due to these measures, all experts predicted inflation from 2020, and as predicted, the inflation rate started increasing from 2021. Inflation in 2022 may have been the highest in the past 40 years. As long as consumer demand does not decrease, inflation will not decrease. Understanding this logic in simple terms, what is the logic of raising interest rates? When interest rates increase, people's EMI's equated monthly installment also increase. That is, after paying the EMI, they have less money left in their hands. This is called disposable income. As soon as disposable income decreases, demand decreases. If interest rates are low, inflation is also low. When interest rates increase, the demand for the volatile currency decreases and its value increases. What has happened is that investors are pulling money out of other countries and investing it in U.S. Treasury bonds. They are investing with the U.S. government. Due to this, the demand for the U.S. dollar is increasing, and consequently the prices as well. This is like a packet of candies. In a class of 40 children, after bringing one kilogram, each child gets a piece of candy. Suddenly, instead of one kilogram, only half a kg of candies arrives. So, every child fights for the candy, and whoever brings the candy controls who gets it, and who doesn't. America abuses this control today. President Nixon's secretary said in the 1970s, Dollar is our currency, but your problem. How true is that? Is there no other currency that can challenge the US dollar? Can any currency replace it in the future? It's a strange question to think about replacing the US dollar. We need to find a currency with stronger, stable economics that most countries trust when trading. These countries should use that currency and pay off their loans in that currency. 
essentially believing in the value of this piece of paper. China's yuan has attempted to become the reserve currency, but China has failed. The euro could also be an alternative, but even the United Kingdom, which was a part of Europe until few years ago, couldn't accept the euro, let alone the rest of the world. If you found value in this video and learned something new, share it with your friends because we believe that everything is human and geography boundaries don't matter. If you want to stay updated with more such content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. And if you enjoyed this video, show your support by giving us a thumbs up. Remember, every like, share and comment fuels our motivation to bring more such exciting content your way. So. Don't hesitate to join the conversation in the comments section below. Until next time, keep learning and stay curious.